Welcome back to the Crypto Gorilla YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about upcoming projects that I have an eye on, as well as projects that are already on the market and give my opinion. As usual, I'm not a financial advisor. Everything I say in this video is just my opinion and you should always do your own research before buying or selling anything. So the first thing I wanna cover is gonna be this whole storytelling NFT narrative. We are seeing a few of these pop up. I covered this one two weeks ago called KPR. We will see brand new information very shortly in the coming weeks. However, they have dropped their discord. I'm going to put a link to that in the description down below because I am very bullish on this project. However, the first one we're talking about today is called Fates. Now their website is beautiful. I realized I'm a sucker for a really good website as well as a really good trailer that has either nice animations or a good song. Something like the Other Deeds trailer or Azuki, their trailer is what pulled me in and made me so bullish on their project. And here, as you can see, as we scroll, they have done a really good job with their website. Now, if we jump onto the about page and we scroll down, you could see that there is a professional team behind this project that goes by Cauldron. And it's made up of a team that previously worked with companies like Blizzard, 343, and they are VC backed. Here they name four different VCs. And if we scroll up, you could see they raised $6.6 .6 million to build the Pixar of Web3. Now it does seem like this will be an interactive story. Here you could see together we're building a world where the community will play a role in owning, experiencing, and shaping the world through games, films, interactive experiences, literature, and real world events. Now, if we hop on to TechCrunch, there is an article on this project and they do mention that they're building out multiple worlds. Here they say they plan to release three different worlds, two of which will be fantasy and then one of which will be science fiction. So this is definitely a project that I'm excited about what I see so far and I look forward to finding out more. The second storytelling NFT project that we're gonna look at today is called Fable. Now they're taking a completely different angle to the storytelling rather than create their own IP characters, they are going to use existing characters that are available in the public domain. If we hop on their website, we could see a few of them. They're gonna have Robin Hood, Winnie the Pooh, Tinkerbell, King Kong, Pinocchio, Little Red Riding Hood, and the Shershire Cat. So the way this is gonna work, it's gonna be an interactive story where the community is gonna make decisions that impact their story. They're gonna do this through RNG, and the whole goal of the story, as you can see, is called Free the Mouse. That's the mission, as Mickey Mouse is becoming public domain in 2024. So all of these seven characters that we just looked at, their whole mission is to free Mickey Mouse from Disney. And then I guess he'll be part of the project or something. Now the team behind it is actually the team that created Wumbo Labs. I don't know if you've noticed, there's a new layout on OpenSea. I believe they just released it this afternoon or yesterday afternoon by the time you're watching this video. And I keep looking here for the number of NFTs. You have to look up here. I do like that they put the creator fee right here. So I don't have to go click buy anymore and agree and then look what the creator fee is pretending I want to buy something, but my heart drops a little bit whenever I see the best offer thinking that the floor price of something I bought just dropped like crazy, but I'm just going to have to get used to the new layout. I do like that they include things right here, like percentage listed. I don't have to click buy now and go look at how many are listed anymore. But yeah, this project is brought to you by Wumbo Labs. It actually has a very strong floor at the moment. Earlier this morning or yesterday morning, by the time you're watching this, it was at 1.5. So people are obviously buying into this community. The next project I want to go over is is called 1CU by 1TM. Now this one is kind of complicated to understand. They're gonna be releasing their website in the next few days. So I do look forward to seeing that, how they're gonna present all of this because they're trying to build a platform, but there's definitely a lot to unpack. I had over a one hour call with the founder and at times I was confused. Like they have so much that they're trying to do. I do think it's a really great idea what they're trying to do, but I am interested in seeing their marketing strategy. Now what they're building is a creator platform where it makes it really easy to collaborate. They are focusing on a ton of different things like I IP protection, they're gonna be able to have a contract that they created where let's say we collaborate on one of my YouTube videos, I'm gonna be able to set up parameters that it automatically pays out whenever we generate revenue so I don't have to handle that and manually do payouts, it's just gonna be paid out through the platform. Now they do have a ton of other features other than that, but that's just a quick recap of what they're trying to do. Now the pass itself, one, it has beautiful art. If you look at this gorilla, obviously a gorilla, he looks awesome, but even some of the other artwork, it really is beautiful. 
possible. Now, what I love about this is that the first pass, because they do plan on having multiple releases, the first one is absolutely free to mint and they're going to have a ton of utility. You're going to be able to stake these. They're going to be doing royalty sharing. You're going to get a token airdrop. And I can tell you people love their token airdrops. They love being sent free money. I bought into these Lana Del Tacos and they have pumped simply because today there is going to be a token that's launching and you're going to be able to burn these and redeem that token. I'm not telling you to go buy these, please. It's probably too late by the time you watch this video, but I did get into these roughly at 0.015 and they did 4X all the way to 0.06 simply because they announced a token. So all that to say, people really love free money, right? That's a no brainer. Now, the other cool thing behind this is that it is backed by Cooler Master, a very well known company. They actually invested a large amount of money in a seed round into this project. So, this is definitely one I'm keeping an eye on. It's minting on the 26th. I'm lucky enough to have whitelist for my community. And if you're interested in joining my private Discord, I'm going to put a link to the waitlist in the description down below. You don't have to pay anything to join the waitlist. However, it definitely increases your odds of getting in if you're on that list because that's where I search for new members for. Now, the next project. I want to talk about is called Azra Games. I spoke about this one two weeks ago and full disclosure, since the last time I spoke about it, I have, or Web3 Wizards, my advising company, has become advisors for this project. However, there has been a public update as I was not allowed to say it in my last video. This is going to be a free mint. Now this project is fully backed by A16Z and if you've been following the space, you know that this whole VC backed gaming projects has been the narrative. They have been absolutely ripping. We're going to talk about Digidaigaku in a little bit, but Digidaigaku the rafts, the crabs that dropped the other day that I got absolutely obliterated on did pump on announcement of VC funding and they have raised $15 million to develop a leading web three game studio. Now the downside is their first game will not be out for a while. However, they will be trying to add as much utility to their Genesis pass as possible. You could expect things like every single game you're going to get. They spoke about these booster packs. So you're going to get items or NFTs for every single game. I know legally it's a gray zone with this stuff on what they're allowed to say in advance. They're not technically allowed to say you're going to get airdrops. They're not technically allowed to talk about tokens, but these are things that I would expect from holding this pass. And like I said, it's absolutely free. So there is zero risk. The next one I want to touch on real quick is called the abyss. Now I did get a lot of DMS about this one, I guess because I follow it or maybe because I liked the trailer. A lot of people are asking me what's up with this one. This is also going to be a free mint gaming project. Now, while they don't have $15 million from a 16 Z, like the previous projects, they are building something really cool. They essentially made four different levels so far. And if you're lucky enough to be able to mint the free NFT, it's going to allow you to play the first level. When you reach the end, there's going to be another NFT. And then in order to play level two, you're going to need that second NFT. So either you can just buy it directly on the marketplace, or you can just hold the first NFT, play through all the levels and simply be rewarded. So this is a really cool project and I'm definitely keeping an eye on it. It's not going to mint for a little while, but I definitely think it's worth checking out. Next, we have a project from Dom, the creator of Vine. Now, if you were around, I think last year or early this year, you probably heard of Subdrive. This is one of the projects that he was developing. This was essentially a console where the NFTs are the games. Now, originally it was supposed to be these 2D games, simple to make, or I don't know, how, I don't want to say simple to make, but relatively simple games, side scrollers, 2D. However, they recently posted this and it does seem like they're developing a lot more complex games, games that are 3D. Seems like they went from Game Boy to N64. So it's nice to see progress on this front. I'm still in the Discord. I've been in there for ages. However, now it does seem like he's releasing this project just for fun. As he says here, it's not currently mintable, so don't fall for any scams. However, he has minted 32 of them just to test them out. Now, these are fully on-chain 3D NFTs. If you look, I move my mouse. I'm sort of interacting with it. You can't drag and drop or anything, but if I move upwards or downwards, it does change the angle. And these are going to be able to evolve or upgrade. I'm not sure how they're going to upgrade, but this is definitely one that I'm keeping my eye on because it does seem very unique and it's by Dom. So people are just going to ape into it. Next on the list, we have QQL by Tyler Hobbs and Dandelion. I spoke about this one a few weeks back and they finally released their tool. This is the tool that you're going to be using if you end up minting one of their NFTs. It has their algorithm plugged into it. There's a ton of different options. You get to select them yourself and you get to create your own NFT. And it does down here save all of the different options that I've created. Now the auction is going to be happening 
happening next week, September 28th. I believe it's a Wednesday. However, most of us are gonna be priced out from this auction. If you know Tyler Hobbs, he is the creator of Fidenza. It currently has an 85 Ethereum floor. However, the good news is that 99 of the 999 NFTs are not gonna be auctioned. And they did say in the Discord to stay tuned as on September 20th, which is today, they will be announcing ways that people who can't afford the auction will be able to get some of these pieces. Now, I have no idea if this is actually gonna be happening, but I did go ahead and connect my wallet to the site. And as you can see, I created a ton of pieces because if you remember, or if you're aware of the Murakami Blade, people got these airdropped for absolutely free just for having connected their wallet to on cyber and touring the Murakami Virtual Museum. Now at the time when they were airdropped, they were worth roughly 1.4 Ethereum, which is thousands of dollars for free. But even now, while they're down, they're still worth almost $500. So if you did do this, you got $500 for free. So if they did have some sort of exclusive, like 10 NFTs that are reserved for people who connected their wallet before a certain date or something, I wanna be part of that. And I mean, it's a great tool. It was really cool to see. I'm used to tools like Figma, Photoshop. I did a lot of that before I became a YouTuber. So using the tool was really fun, seeing all the different options. However, if I do get that extra perk just for having tested it out, that would be really great. Next, another project that is doing the whole application process as well as a small Genesis collection is going to be John Doe Collective. I don't think there's a Twitter, their Discord while I'm in it, it is private. So all I'm gonna do is link this submission form at the bottom in the description of this video. And if you aren't already in the Discord, when you sign up, just click outside referral, and then you can continue to fill this out. And hopefully if you get selected and you do decide to mint, if you wanna be part of the community, great. If not, hopefully for you, it'll make a good flip as these small supply passes have been doing very well. But one thing to consider, the mint price is going to be expensive. It is going to be 2.5 Ethereum. And to be honest, even though in the Discord, there's a lot of notable people, I have no idea who is behind this project as the name of the team is just John Doe 0001, John Doe 0002. I guess that's part of the whole lore. Next on the list is a project called Baby Gator. This one is launching on September 29th. Now it's a project by Bubble World. If you're unfamiliar with this, they are launching a series of projects. Here's their founder pass. Unfortunately, founder price is down pretty bad from the original mint price. However, they are finally launching their first project. Now, if you don't recognize this gator, he is part of a bunch of these cartoons. The artist is the creator of this little cartoon series. You might be familiar, you might have seen it on different websites. I know 9gag actually retweeted this the other day, but I personally really love the art for this collection. It reminds me a little bit of the Hello Kitty collection we just saw drop not too long ago. However, I personally really like these characters. I like the variety and I'm looking forward to this one purely due to the art. So like I said, this one drops on September 29th at 5 p.m. Eastern. Next on the list is a project called Heads by Matt Fury. This one I'm just keeping an eye on. Most of them are already minted. Here you can see 850 items of the 1000 supply. They have a very high floor of 3.2 Ethereum. Now the creator of this, Matt Fury, is actually the artist behind the Rare Pepes. If you don't know this, it's these cards that have sold for insane amount of ETH. Here you have 11 ETH, 8 ETH, and just crazy numbers. They also have, I guess you could call this a Genesis collection of 103 items and the floor price on these. I don't think there's been a sale of that, but the floor price is 25 Ethereum. However, if we scroll through here, there have been some pretty insane, wow, a 29 ETH and 33 ETH sale. Man, that's great. Wow, 60 ETH sale for this item. It's interactive, which is cool, but I don't know if I'd pay 60 Ethereum for this. So anyways, the mint is currently happening. It was actually really easy to get whitelist for this if you're in the Chainsaw Discord. However, hopefully there's still some left for the public mint. I believe mint price for this is 0.6, yeah, 0.666. But like I said, the current floor is 3.2 Ethereum. So by Wednesday, September 21st, if there's still any supply left, they're gonna be having a public sale. I assume it's gonna be a gas war, but still definitely one I'm keeping an eye on. Now that does it for upcoming projects. Now I wanted to talk about projects. Well, this one is also upcoming, but I want to talk about projects that are either on the market or that I've already spoken about. The first one is one that's not out yet. It's not coming out, I don't believe for a while. I am really excited about this one. I really love the slow drip marketing that they're doing with the art here. They're not showing any of the NFTs. However, if you jump over to Vi's profile, the creator, Vi has been dropping NFTs. Now I did like the first one, although the art style is very different 
different from the pieces we're seeing on the ether page. I was a fan of this one, but ever since then he has dropped a second piece. Now here he does say to be fully transparent, he's just experimenting with the gold, like this piece is not finished. However, I won't lie, I was a little bit not as hype once I saw this piece. One, if you showed me the art from ether and you compared it to this, I would never have guessed that this is the collection for that project. The art seems very different in my opinion, and I'm not sure why that's the case. And two, I'm looking at this. If you look at the chin, it's like behind the hood. I almost feel like there's some mistakes. Like the hand should be above him, maybe, or her. I'm not sure if it's a guy or a girl. And I just, I don't know. To me, I guess I expected different. So I'm still excited about this project. It's still on my, you know, get whitelist at all cost list. But I'm going to be watching this closely and seeing the NFTs that they release because I was a bit shocked when I saw this. It's not, it doesn't look anything like, if you put them together, I would think it's two completely different projects. That's what I'm gonna say. Next, let's talk about about Renga because this was the most collection last week. I believe over 30% of trading volume was on either Art of Season, Renga, or the Renga black boxes. Now, a ton of people were simply just gambling on these. I think people were just bored, late night gambles. They were pumping late at night. I was in some streams where they were simply opening them. Everybody was just watching people open them. Now, the weird thing here is if you look at the floor price, it's 1.2. If you look at the black boxes, it's 2.1. So there's a big difference between the boxes and the PFPs. So if you're going to be opening these boxes and even if you hit a rare, like I was watching people open them, they were hitting a rare and then they were checking the floor traits and it was almost less than the boxes. So they were essentially losing money by opening the boxes, even when they were hitting a rare. So that's just kind of weird. And I don't really understand that. I love the art. Dirty Robot is an amazing artist and I absolutely love their work. However, I did miss the boat on Renga. The one that I'm watching, yo, again, see, I looked here. I was like, what? The floor is down to 0.28, but that's just the best offer. So I didn't get in on Renga. I did end up buying two Gangster All-Stars. I am hoping that they do have a pump. A lot of people were speculating because of Renga, people would want to gamble on the Gangster All-Stars as well. However, there is a very big difference in how these reveal. These ones are revealing over a five week period, which is something we've never seen. It's a very long reveal and they will be partially revealing. So it's gonna be first, I think just the box opens, then you're gonna find out which weapon you have, then you're gonna find out which gang you have. And like I said, over a five week period. How the Renga boxes work, it's deflationary because people manually choose when they want to open their box. Very similar or exactly like how the Clonex vials work, right? There's the vials over time, the price just increases because there's still some rare ones that haven't been minted. So people are opening them gambling for a rare piece. But I am still hopeful. I bought two of these roughly at I think 0.33 and 0.35. So I am hoping that they pump with speculation. Maybe people are going to want to gamble on some rare, some rare weapons, some rare gangs. So I do hope they go up to at least 0.4 or 0.45. But if you were hoping that it's going to be that deflationary asset, that's not how these work. Next, the Yoga Pets Genesis auction has ended. As you can see here, it ended at five Ethereum, which is absolutely insane. Never would I have guessed that these are gonna go to five ETH. I personally bid three Ethereum thinking I was more than covered. I thought it was gonna be something like two Ethereum. So this is absolutely crazy to see. I'm really interested to see how they're gonna perform on secondary because the MVPs from Meme Land, those were five ETH to mint. And those went all the way up to 30 ETH. I think no chance that these are gonna go up to 30 ETH. I can see them going between eight to 10 ETH. It would be a real shame if they went under five ETH. I think that would not only hurt Yoga Pets, but that would hurt Meme Land. Although some people might disagree, they are very correlated due to the pretty much copy paste strategy in the marketing campaign. However, I do remain bullish on the Yoga Pets project. And last but not least, let's discuss one of my biggest L's in a while, the Digi Daigaku. These were down, the floor was at eight Ethereum and the spirits were at three Ethereum, I literally found a floor spirit and a floor digi that match because this week or next week, you're gonna be able to, I guess, burn your spirit and merge it with your digi and make a royal digi if you have the matching number. And they did an AMA in the server. It was token gated. However, a ton of people were streaming it. So I did get to listen to Gabe speak. He's an excellent speaker, by the way. He clearly, or he seems like he knows what he's doing, but these were at three. The one I wanted to buy was 3.4 and the matching digi Daigaku was 8.7. I just found it was a match massive investment to make. It was 12 ETH. Maverick, somebody from my server was screaming that I should go buy this. Him and definitely DJ were both. Maverick actually went ahead and wrote a thread here on Twitter on why he's so bullish on this project. I should have bought one. I did not. And I know when these things hit 20 Ethereum, I'm going to be feeling really bad about my decision to not buy one. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed to my channel, would you kindly hit that subscribe button? Smash that bell notification. Thank you for watching the Crypto Gorilla.